What's going on guys, my name's Zach, welcome to this video. Today we're going to be taking a look at the Little Daredevil, which is the Serpentus Faction Frigate. Very strong bonuses towards Stasis Webs, Blasters and Rails, and also it's very fast to boot. And we're going to be taking a look at the fit that I use in Nullsec, and especially like for streaming, because I feel it's able to provide loads of content, and we're going to be getting into that in a minute when we take a look at the fit. So let's get started. And there we go guys, so first things first, let's take a look at the bonuses of the actual Daredevil. It's very very strong for a little frig, so the first one, Galante Frig bonus per skill level, keep in mind, 10% bonus to small hybrid turret fall off, so that's really ideal for uh, like a rail setup, you get a really long range. Uh, Mimitar Frigate bonus per skill level, so if you've got this at 5, you get 10% per level, and that equals a 90% web. And that's one of the main parts of this ship, the web is so so strong, as with all of the, the other, the SERP lineup as well, like the Vigilant and the Vindicator. Very good for slowing targets down, especially in this fit, because if you can see the fit in the bottom there, it's literally got zero tanks, so this web is key to staying alive. And there's the fit guys, the first thing you're going to notice is that it's very expensive and then the second thing you're going to notice is where is the actual tank and yes, I'm like a total disclaimer here, I don't think the ship's like super brilliant or anything but what it does allow because it's so fast and slippery is that you can engage much larger gangs, especially in null sec. I, I mean, I really would, I don't like flying this in low sec at all, but um, the null sec, I think it really reigns supreme for a lot of factors, and the main one obviously being the speed. So um, I took this up to hold space the other day on stream, expecting just to get blapped out the sky and stuff, and ended up having a really long skirmish with um, Horde and I don't think like any other ships give the give the ability to actually do that while staying alive even though like we're talking zero tank here and you'll see in the highlights at the end which I'll put in and we'll have a chat about um, just the sheer speed of the thing I mean I think I've got me quiff yeah I've got me quiff in right now and without links and implants this thing pushes 4.7 like cold and you go heat and we'll go just under 7 kms there. I mean, that's ridiculous, guys, for like, like, no links or anything. I mean, that's just fucking crazy. So, yeah, this is what I really like. It enables me to provide loads of content on the stream, especially for the stream. Like, I don't really fly this normally, but for the stream all the time, it's uh, really good. Like I say, instead of walking around looking for fights and shit, you can just fight gangs with this. And um, like I say, it's not super brilliant, but it gives you that uh, stability. So let's uh, just take a quick look at the fit here. So the 150 rails work really well with that fall off bonus. And what I usually keep loaded is um, either Dread Gristas Thorium or Navy Thorium is fine as well. The, the only difference is like 10 DPS between the two of them to be honest. But um, every little bit of DPS counts in this because if you get caught you're really going to need to get away from anything before you get killed. Because literally two or three shots like I say you're going to get wrecked pretty hard. So we've got optimal of 20 and a fall off of 34, which is pretty respectable when you, especially when you're chasing down scepters and they try and burn away from you, the, the fall off bonus really comes into play there, which is very nice. Um, the Gisty Air Type 5mm micro warp drive, worth the money in my opinion, you get the minus 2% or minus 3% nerf to the cap, it might actually be 2 on the on the 5mm's. Um, the capacitor usage isn't really very strong. So the cap runs all in for like three minutes or something and we're not really using the web too much so we're pretty stable without the web on which is nice we can just keep burning around obviously hybrid turrets and rails um depending on what ammo you've got that's going to affect your cap as well but overall no cap issues with this uh fed navy web now for the rail fit especially this kitey version of the mwd i really recommend if nothing else just get the fed navy web on here and the reason why is because Cold will go 14 kilometers, and this is where it comes into play. The Daredevil bonus, especially 90% web at 18 kilometers, no links. So, I mean, if you're adding links to this, you're going to get like what 24, 25, I think, with the Fed Navy. It's really, really strong. And this this will save you guaranteed from like drum eels and other scepters that try and get in close. You just want to literally start spamming it as soon as they come into like 20k, and you'll get a web off and you'll be able to just coast out range and stuff. Really good. And obviously you'll be slowing them down a little bit as well and they'll shut themselves. So the web really really strong. Definitely get the best one you can afford. Like especially for this fit. But I mean blasters and all that you can just like take a T2 web or a meta one's really fine. Um, in the lows we've got a track enhancer just to give a little bit of extra tracking as well as some extra fall off range and optimal and stuff. 
Um, pretty low on the CPU to fit as well, and it's very tight, so that really balanced well with the, um, especially with the Locust rig. Uh, two mag stabs just to keep the damage up a little bit. Doesn't do great on the DPS department. I think we can push like 240, I think, with Javelin. I'll put all the stats on the bottom of the screen there for you to have a look at for the different ammo. And um, I was messing around with the nano fiber, which is probably better to be honest for like warping off from sweepoles, like insta sweepoles and shit like that, because that will they will really hurt you. You'll, you'll get well into structure or even dead off one of those. But I did opt for the overdrive just because of that sheer raw speed. It's absolutely crazy. And I think it really helps like in the long run. Um, the Locust Coordinator gives that, again, the epic range and stuff, which is nice. So we can literally shoot out to um, like the max point range and stuff of the Kaldari Warp Disruptor. Again, I totally skipped that. So we've got 26 cold and 31 heated with that. I used to run a, a Republic Fleet one, but it doesn't actually fit now since the tier aside, which makes me sad, but nevertheless. And um, overclock and rig just for the CPU to fit everything. And the, this is the one major drawback with a real daredevil, especially kite fit like this. The lock range is absolutely shit. So without this ionic rig, we're only locking like 31 kilometers. And with, we're doing 39.06 kilometers, which still, for the speed of the thing, you're like going to be unlocking and locking stuff like quite a lot of the time, unless you're on top of your, your manual pilot game, which I'm not. So blah, blah, I like struggle with the range on this quite a lot. Um, I did try swapping the Ionic Rig to a T2, but you've got to drop the Hybrid Locust down to a T1 to enable that uh, calibration to fit, but you only get like an extra 2 kilometers on the lock range, like 41.3 or something. So I didn't really think that was worth over having the extra few kilometers on the um, on the Locust Coordinator for the guns. And I think that was that's really worth uh, staying with. Um, cargo, let's just actually bring it up because we've fit loads of stuff in here. So for the ammo and stuff guys, I normally take a little bit of everything for different ranges, antimatter, javelin, spike, which I'll, I mean, I don't really ever use and you shouldn't really use it because uh, max lock range and stuff, but you do get um, a nice optimal with the spike, like 42, so you can always hit stuff at that range. But um, generally I'll keep the, either the Dread Garistas or the, um, the Navy Thorium loaded and I find that's sort of the middle ground for DPS and range. So we've got 178 there with a the Dread Garista. Not great, but really good um, still for killing Scepters and stuff. Uh, javelin, obviously, if you got tackled, you want to stick that in if you can. But um, like I say, you're probably not going to live long enough to reload if you actually do get hard tackled. Um, and that's probably it for the ammo. Now, Nanite Repair, just because I go like a null pretty deep, I always take shitloads of Nanite, which is probably like 400, a little bit extreme, to be honest. But I think like 3 400 is really cool because you are going to be heating all the time in this ship. Uh, mobile Depot with a small armor rep, obviously, so you can get repped out. And uh, I would not normally take hull reps, but because we're not fitting a damage control or like bulkheads or anything like that, it doesn't take actually long to rep up the hull with the, the stupid long cycles of the hull rep, so that's always worth it. And we've got uh, anti-pharmacon law locura, I don't even know how to pronounce that, locura, whatever, we'll just call it the track and drifter drug. So this gives a 8% bonus to uh, tracking speed, which is really good, especially if you've got like close orbits. Because you're going so fast, you, you can't like out track yourself with the rails. And they're pretty cheap, I think like 3.5mm. Normally take two of these. I've already got me Quaif injected there, which is given with an awesome speed. And remember guys, I haven't got any implants and stuff, so we can go faster for not a lot of a bit of money. We'll probably hit the 7k mark, uh, just getting a couple of cheapish implants, which I'll probably actually start looking into it, to be honest. But yeah, that's uh, cargo holding stuff. So, like, again, again, what I really fly the ship for, especially on stream, is just so I can stay on grid and, like, keep the action rolling. And uh, it's really fun to see, like, people, like, in the chat saying, what the fuck, you know, I'm flying the ship around, like, 30-man gangs and shit. But, uh, yeah, I do lose loads of these as well. And the actual cost of the ship is probably around 240 mil-ish. Um, so hits the wallet a little bit hard especially when you lose like three or four on a stream just to like stupid insta lock speed pulls and shit does turn a, a bit salty at the end but it's my own fault for flying these uh, stupid ships and one last thing guys there is a, a cool comet fit which you can use for null sec which hasn't really got the epic speed this has but really similar stats and also you get to have a rep as well so which is pretty cool and we'll probably run through that either later in the video or in another vid excuse me so we'll uh, we'll check out some PvP now. 
and um, I'll talk you through some of the situations we got in the other day on the stream and um, what I was doing when I was flying. So catch you in two seconds. So in this first little example guys, there was a little gang chasing us and there was a hyena which was obviously, it's super dangerous to the, the kitey fits and stuff, um, but he, the one thing that's really good about the daredevil is, with this fit is that he doesn't expect the, the epic range that I can get, so it sort of negated his webs a bit, he's not going to have like a huge tank for the DPS I can output. One of the other things though was the Vexa Navy issue, and this is like a Vexa Na Navy issue especially with the drone speed bonus is very dangerous and you'll see why in a sec, but um, I get the jump on the hyena here literally just start spamming towards him and really I wanted to actually ram him and um, get the web on and stuff straight away but I was just spamming approach and I hit orbit just to then get into lock range and as soon as his webs landed then we wanted to be approaching again you can see I'm taking some decent little chunks out of his shield and once we got into his armor it was pretty pretty easy work from there he was probably bricking it like wondering what the fuck was going on but um, I did actually start double clicking past him here and you'll see that I did start losing some like decent shots and things and the, the only reason was is because like as soon as I started burning past them that was when the shots were going to really connect and he didn't have a scram he had a long pint so I was pretty safe in that respect and the only thing now is the Vexa drones are coming to get us so there we go We've directly past them the shots are hitting really well pretty much unloading max DPS on them right there and there's the first volley from the drones and wait for it, there's the second volley from the drones. Vexa Navy so, so crazy. The the drones, I think you just had Hornets, I think. I should be able to lock them up in a sec, yeah. Hornet 2 is doing about 5.6 KMS. And that's like much faster than Moria's standard. So you've got to really be, you've got to really watch drones in this. Like any drones really, if you turn in or anything, your speed's going to go right down. And uh, drones are just going to get hits on you for days. So luckily you can sort of hit drones really easily. Generally you're burning away from them. So the transversal is pretty like zero. So you can get like decent hits on them. And obviously we've got the web as well. So we can uh, heat that or whatever and uh, land some really good hits. So that's, uh, that was literally on stream. Good little highlight. Um, the next clips are going to be a little less quality. Because I had to download the VOD and actually... Um, like try and encode it so I can put it on After Effects so sorry about that guys but it's the best I can do for now. Okay guys for this next skirmish this was actually from the stream last week I believe uh, against Pandemic Horde what a bunch of cool guys they were very respectful in the chat and the private messages and the emails that followed the fights as well so I just like to give them a big shout out to that really cool guys um so yeah this is this was exactly what I went to Nullsec for you can see I've already taken like tons of damage from uh jumping through the gate initially and burning back which was pretty dangerous there's a an omen navy on grid as well which is really bad for me it's got like a really good range and i can just project out a couple of shots and kill it straight away but um a couple of things with this merlin i really should have committed to so i started taking some damage and then i'm sort of like cycling down in the old spiral maneuver and stuff so it keeps me speed up and uh, start spamming me web there like really important to keep it overheated at all times just so you can spam it and then maybe get a, a web on something but yeah i should have dipped under and then uh, went for the kill sort of committed the only thing really that was a danger with was um something almond in the drum and he had a real hard on for us for about uh, half an hour and i think he's the guy that actually ended up killing this uh, daredevil in this way but the drums were really pesky and it's the only thing really that on grid that was a real danger other than the the confessor and the omen navy issue with the the crazy projection i had but uh, this is the type of pvp i love i mean i didn't really get many kills this day but like we, we had a good skirmish and everyone in the stream sort of liked it and this is the content which i like to provide you people you know like like flying stuff around null sex really cool in the bigger ships but you're just going to end up getting blobbed most of the time and uh i know people like to say that but this is what i like to to show you guys that it can be done um, and I'm not really the like the most skilled pilot out there, but this Daredevil just really, really makes uh, for good view, and I think, and it's like it's just the sheer speed of the thing, guys. It's just fucking insane. Fast forward about ten minutes, uh, still in with the the horde guys fighting those, and there's a rifter and a couple of sweep pulls now, and the rifter sort of isolates himself, but these sweep pulls are like all arty fit, and it made it really difficult to sort of like commit to the rifter, but um. You'll see the overheated web here really comes into play. So the already the sweep poles landing some shots there, not really big ones. Um, and the rift I've got them locked up now, and I really want to swing around, but the, like one of the sweep poles gets in really close here, and like the overheated web is the only thing that saved us here, guys. It was like absolutely crazy. And I actually killed this rifter guy like later on, but it was uh, a really like tough little fight against 
Like, the, the speed pulls, I feel, can track so well. Like, even the speed doesn't really help too much. And I think I'll actually derp here because, yeah, me mic warp drive wasn't on and I was, like, screaming at myself after, like, after realising on the stream and you can see that epic hit from the the old speed pull and I managed just to get out of the range of him. Overheated web and mic warp drive definitely, definitely saved us. <laughs> like, I was literally on the edge of my seat there and you can see all the other shit coming in. Really fun. Like, this is fun to me, guys. I'm not sure about you, but uh, again, there's that drum coming in. And that was a that was a good little, like, shit your pants moment. So you've got to really be prepared for those when you're flying, like, an untanked frig against the, the Svipol Menace and stuff. So after getting reshipped and stuff in another one, I came straight back up to Fight Horde again because it was so much fun. And I was giving them a little run around here. I had some aggro on the system behind us. And I landed on the gate and it was only a slasher. So I thought, right, I'm, I need to get at least one kill in this ship. Even though I've been having so much fun, I do need to make it, uh, like, actually show us killing something with it. And there's a hawk just jumping in there, which is pretty bad as well. So there's other stuff jumping in, which is now un -aggroed. So I'm very aware of this, but I really want to commit to the slasher, so I just like basically ram him in a sec. I'm pretty far out of range of the other stuff. The Hawk's like pretty slow, obviously. The Sweet Poles uh, can't really catch us in time. And um, overheating the web there, spamming it, but don't get it on and the uh, slasher just dies anyway. So I got him well separated out and he, pr he looks like he should have brick and started burning away from his gang. If he just like stood stuck pretty close to them, it would have been a lot better because obviously all these Sweet Poles and stuff would have been able to project. Again, like overheated web, can't stress that enough guys, like you need to have that overheated and I should be using me hotkeys as well, which I wasn't, so that's why another reason why I'm like bad at this game. But uh, that was one kill and I think there's just one more clip now where I was fighting a couple, well the, the same gang was there, like 15-20 man gang, uh, pandemic horde boys, but there was a couple of maledictions which I almost, I almost killed one, but the guy was a really good pilot so I'll just uh, throw that up next. Okay guys, I think this is the last fight which I actually had. I did actually make it home with this last Daredevil which was nice. Um, so the Malediction here is coming out. He's like extra long scram, uh, sorry, extra long warp disruptor as well. Like uh, Malediction should have coming out there. But he sort of turns around. He's going really fast, like over 7k there. He must be heating like absolutely crazy. There's drams coming in. We've got a Cormorant as well. I was aware of that in case he was like a super crazy snipe fit. I've already taken like tons of damage and stuff. And uh, this is where the I think the web saved us here. Like it allowed us to pull a wrench from this ram, so he got in really close, even though he's got a long point on us. Oh, I was still pretty scared, and just in case he had the scram. And uh, you can see there, he's already like 30k away from us. Since I got him 90% webbed, he, he went, he started going like really slow, obviously. And um, yeah, it's it was a good little, good little skirmish. This the malediction starts coming back in as a confessor now on grid. I'm like, I'm bricking it at this point. I'm like thinking, oh, I'm just going to die. But um, start killing the drones because that's really the only thing that's going to be applying any damage once I start turning and uh, slowing down and things. Plenty of heat left on the mighty warp drive. So with them drones dead, we can uh, start concentrating back on this, these tackle ships. I was more concerned about the malediction really because he was like much faster than me. Like even like I'm pretty sure he would have been heating there, like doing nearly seven cans uh, shit, but. Really good. The drum pilot's uh, coming in a little bit closer now, but again, with the web. Like, such a strong web, that Fed Navy web, guys. Like, totally worth the money. I think a standard web wouldn't save you as much as that will. So, if anything, like I say, use the web to uh, pimp. And there we go, Gorma coming on grid. And I just decided to peace out at that point. So, yeah, awesome, awesome little fights. So, there we go, guys. I hope you enjoyed the vid. Um, like keep in mind what I say, like the main things, you keep your speed up, keep your web overloaded um, and just really try and avoid all these V-pulls and yeah, leave us some comments. What do you think about the fit? I'm sure that's not going to be everyone's taste, but that's the really cool thing about Eve. Everyone does um, their own thing and the, their own slightly different style, which is cool. So I'm guessing some guys aren't going like it. it's too expensive. I, I totally agree. Not something I would usually fly unless I was like, obviously I've got like quite a bit of ISK in the bank now. Um, so, I mean, I wouldn't be flying these all the, all the time, usually. Obviously, you don't fly anything, you can't afford to lose that. But um, I think this vid's dragged on a little bit now. So, the next vid I'll do, the Comet, which is the cheap version of this Daredevil. Um, I think I'll just show you the fit quickly, though. Just before we piece out of this vid, let's have a look here. Frigates, because it is, uh, it is a good little ship to use. Sort of practice mode, and it's mega cheap, too. Where is it? Fed Navy Comet, dual prop null. There we go. So that's the, like, a super kite version. 
of this. I still pimp the warp disruptor, but I mean it's only like 30, 40 mil or anything for the Kaldari Navy, and you get that 31 kilometer heated point, which I think is really worth because like we're going to be like long range-ish. And it's basically just the, the same fit. Um, not as fast, obviously, but we've got dual prop, which is really good for getting rid of tackle instead of the web. I feel it's much better having the dual prop because you can just like burn in a straight line if you get scrammed or whatever. And um, yeah, ANSI rig for the fitting and stuff. So we'll go over this a little bump, bit more in depth. But uh, yeah, feel free to take a screen grab and have a chat, have a try of it, sorry. And that's probably a little bit it from me. Usually I'd lead out with some little cinematic and stuff, but since CCP removed the advanced camera options and the tracker no longer works properly, fuck that, I can't do it. So yeah, I'll just end it right now. Thanks for watching, guys, and I'll catch you next time.